I have my tired, tired sidekick here, Penny. She's gonna help us do the video. I just uh, I put this piece of foam up here because I'm getting ready to shoot a video on the 480, and I saw, let's see if he's still there, yep, and a mono shrimp crawling up the side of the Madden filter uh, just in search of, of, of good algae to eat, I guess. And so I thought that was pretty cool, so I had to shoot that video, but <laughs> that is just so awesome. So I'm gonna shoot a video today on this beautiful tank, the 480 gallon. I figured it's a, at least time to do an update on this thing. Uh, tons new going on. I wanna share with you guys how we filter this tank and uh, what, what I attribute all the success to. As you can see, we're starting to get some algae. I'll have to clean that off real quick. But this is what we're talking about today, this awesome, awesome tank. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, I just want to do a quick run over this tank. I mean, obviously, it is just fully grown, doing excellent. I absolutely love it. Um, I do got to give a shout out first to one of our sponsors of the channel, Fritz. Um, they, they really help us out and do, do some amazing things for us. And uh, so I just uh, cleaned the front glass with uh, some glass cleaner, using my micro cloth, and now it's looking nice and clear. And so this tank is doing really, really good. Uh, now we are starting to get some algae. You can see some brown algae there on the, the Crypt Spiralis. And I also have not taken the time to trim moss yet. So as you can see, I'm paying the price for it. It's starting to peel off of the wood. So I'm gonna have to drain this tank down and tie uh, moss back onto it. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you know, it's my own fault. I neglected it. And you can see a ton of it floated back there. So I gotta get back there and replant it. Uh, the type of swords that we chose for back there Obviously don't grow very tall, and so I got some different plans for that. I'm thinking about doing uh, Crypt Spiral, or not Crypt Spiral, it's, um, what is it called, Val Scenaria uh, back there, uh, probably Corkscrew or something like that, yeah, or even Jungle Val, I don't know. But I want to do a really tall plant back there that's pretty fast growing, and just kind of see what it, what it does back there, and it will provide a lot more cover for the shrimp, and a different place to forage uh, for them, so... I don't know, that's what I'm thinking, but as you can see, there are just tons and tons and tons of shrimp in here. I fed them earlier because I didn't think I was going to make a video on it, but I just decided last minute, like, I was looking at the tank, and, and I just absolutely love it, so I was like, yeah, let's shoot a video on it. Let's just, let's give it a go. And so, uh, yeah, this tank is really doing well. Like I said, the only problem is I am starting to get a little bit of black beard algae, um, which is not not my favorite thing in the whole world, but what I'll do is I'll just turn the lights off over the weekend and uh, It'll kick back on it. I think I need to start dosing ferts um, I haven't dosed ferts in probably about a couple weeks because if you look back here You start seeing a lot of the the new java fern growth is just not doing well And I think it's because of lack of fertilizer at this point. Uh, there's just not enough nitrates in the water There's not enough uh, macro micronutrients or whatever the plant experts would tell me but because the the rooted plants um, rely on the soil they're doing phenomenal you can see like baby 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 this is a bigger baby 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 um, there's another baby right there and uh, they're just everywhere like look over here this this pathway as as my helper clogs up the aisle way there's a baby there's a baby there's one there's a couple back there and uh, it's just doing absolutely great like love this tank love this tank um, just so you guys know like this is I'll show you this is my view all day every day can you not get used to that I mean I I could I could live with that all the time that's why when Monday rolls around I'm like oh thank God it's time to go back to work I can't wait and uh, just oh my gosh I, uh, this is why aquariums are so peaceful right here because you can kind of just sit back, enjoy it, and uh, just absolutely love it. But let's get into the actual topic today. We're going to talk about filtration, and I'm going to talk about how we filter this big aquarium. And it's not going to be the type of video that you probably think it's going to be because really, look at that. That filter is pretty boring, uh, but we, we will talk about um, some pretty unique filters and talk about ways that you can keep your aquarium looking this way 
And uh, believe it or not, this tank is literally no maintenance whatsoever. It's just proper balance and, and planning, and, uh, and that's how we got this tank. But let's get into it. Before we get much farther in the video, I just want to take a second and thank you all for supporting Flip Aquatics, being a part of this channel, being a subscriber. We appreciate you so much. Without you guys, we would not be where we are today, and I'm so appreciative of it. So if you guys want to, subscribing, a lot of people think it costs money. It doesn't cost a thing. If you want to join the Flip Aquatics team, just hit that subscribe button. It will let you know when a video comes out, especially if you hit the notification bell. But we would love for you guys to join this journey with us and see what happens not only with this tank behind me, but with Flip Aquatics in general, with our business, where we're going, what we're going to breed, what we're going to do for the shrimp hobby, and even the nano fish community. We're going to do so much, and we want you to be a part of it. So consider hitting that subscribe button, and uh, let's get back to the video. Well, let's start with the, the basics first. So obviously our filtration for this tank, uh, the water runs down here. There's some overflows up top, which I'll show you in a little bit but the water flows down here. Really the only reason we have this matten filter here, and, and this is a matten filter if you guys didn't know. It's actually just a tank divider at this point, uh, but this is three inches wide. Um, it's like a 40 gallon breeder matten filter. Uh, it's just a little bit short because it's actually a 75 gallon. And so we just have this one in there to stop the sound. And then I put this guy up here to stop the sound as well because sometimes it overflows over. This one we're actually using for filtration. So the water comes in, it has to come down. It has to flow through this one. So there's a lot of biological filtration in there. And then over here, we just have the, I don't know, the return pump that pumps back up at the top. And then we have this, this is from Brightwell, which is also a channel sponsor. So shout out to them. But this is just a home for bacteria. You don't have to have a ton of flow over this. They actually only say like, I wanna say it's only like 10 gallons an hour. So it's very, very slow flow. But we just have that in there. We're actually going to stack up a few more of these on top of it just to get some more biological filtration. But one thing that I want to add is I want to add more of these. So right now, like I said, we're only using that just to dampen the sound. But what I want to do is I want to build a little PVC um, plate or I guess a PVC stand maybe. And then this is what I'm going to do. We got in this foam and I'm sorry it's so dark. I'll bring it over here. We got in this foam and we actually got... Uh, quite a few different sizes. These are just the ones that I grabbed. We're gonna build like a little tower. Uh, this one's like, I don't know, 10 pores per inch. So it's 10 PPI. And then this one's probably like 20. Um, this one's probably like around 22. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this one on top because it's the thickest. So this will catch like all the big particles. And then this one will probably be the next one. So this will catch like I don't know, the medium particles. This one will start catching some of the fine. And then we'll have this one on the bottom, which will catch the really fine. Since this one is white, when it gets really dirty, we're gonna know that, hey, we gotta change our filter, um, or at least we gotta get in there and clean it. And so this is gonna catch a lot of like the, the debris. Even though there's not a ton of it, you could see we do get some of it. And so we're gonna build a little stand for these guys. And so I'm really excited for that. I think it's gonna help. And then also adding another one of those is gonna help. But set this back down. That's the boring filtration. Uh, the big reason why this tank is so successful is because of a thing I like to call balance. So when you look in here, all you see is like live plants everywhere. You got moss, you got java ferns, you got narrow leaf java fern, you got crypts down below, you got cryptsporalis popping out of here, um, you got more java fern back there, possibly even trident java fern, I forget. Um, you just got plants everywhere, and that is in itself the best filtration you could ever have for an aquarium. I know that I've said it before, but we have not done a water change going on a year for this tank now. I think it's like a month or two shy of a year. And so we have not done a single water change. All we do is we top it off. So as you can see, it's a little low right now. We'll actually fill it up all the way to here with pure RO water, RODI water, or distilled water if you have that available. We'll fill it all the way up, and it's good. And so the reason we haven't had to do water changes is because nitrates, which is the last part of the nitrogen cycle, the plants absorb that and use it for fuel to grow. And so you really don't have to do water changes when you have that proper balance. And so plants in general are the reason that tanks can be self-sufficient. And so obviously this, this tank is, is just doing great without any water changes at all. And so filtration really comes down to not only like your mechanical filtration, your biological filtration, everything that can run down here, but it has a lot to do with every single one of these plants that are in here. Um, they're absorbing, you know, nitrogen, 
or not nitrogen, <laughs> nitrates. They're absorbing um, metals, heavy metals in the water. They're um, converting things that are necessarily or could potentially be toxic to shrimp into something that actually grows like a beautiful plant. And so that's why in any shrimp tank, it's important uh, to have some type of plant in there. You know, I always recommend moss um, and everything that we keep is, is all hardy stuff. Like I said, we don't do much of any maintenance to this tank. Prime example, we just, we don't. And, and sometimes it costs us, um, but you know, we're gonna fix that. But we don't do a lot of maintenance to this tank because it's so balanced. And, and with that, um, we don't wanna have plants in there that are super hard to take care of. And so we chose every single plant that was just easy, as easy as can be. They're all beginner type plants. And so as you can see, like these are gorgeous. So you can have a beautiful planted tank without having a ton of scale. And that's really how we based um, what plants we were going to carry, even at Flip Aquatics, based on a shrimp tank. Um, because shrimp tank, you really don't want to be dosing fertilizer all the time. You don't want to be doing water change all the time. You just want it to be consistent. And that's what we've created here. And so that's the really important part to know is picking your plants wisely. Um, beginner plants are always great and and obviously you can have a beautiful aquascaped aquarium without doing high-tech plants like we don't dose uh, co2 i think the last time i dosed fertilizer in this tank it's been over a month and that's why some of the plants are, are suffering um, but we're going to put a little bit of of plant fertilizer in here nothing crazy we don't even follow the instructions like this tank uh the instructions would probably be like i don't know um if you're using um, you know, a normal fertilizer, it might be, you know, 400 pumps, um, or maybe not 400 pumps, maybe like 40 pumps, but we'll maybe do like a third of that. So we might do 10 pumps just because you don't need a ton because we have such a self-sustained aquarium. And so that's why we've had success. And that's why we continue to have success because of plants and because of just easy filtration, like nothing major. We always had this plan of setting up this guy right here which is an fx4 just to get that extra filtration but we don't need it and so we never really set up like as you can see like there's literally like dust on here um that thing hasn't been moved since we put it there and uh and like i said we've always wanted to set it up we just haven't and we don't need to and let's see real quick while we're down here let's see if this mono shrimp is still crawling nope don't see him so he must have went back down to the water uh, we do get some shrimp down here from that every now and then. I still haven't put the stainless steel mesh up to prevent that. But we just net them out of here probably every couple of weeks. And uh, I do feed them down here. Oh, there's a dead amount. That sucks. So I'll drop some food down in there. But we do it. So just so you know, I do feed. There's a mineral ball that I dropped in there the other day. And obviously they didn't eat it all. But since it's 480 gallons, you really don't have to worry about... Uh, taking the, the expired food out of there look at this guy how'd you get in there that's a panda black panda a little stinker i'll have to net that guy out but yeah so this thing's just doing great but let me uh let me show you what plants we use and i'll show them uh, ruby was walking back with me and this is our other dog uh emma but ruby is walking back with me i didn't know i thought she was still sleeping i shut her in the door uh, we got the whole family here today. We got all the all the dogs. These are two of them, and then there's a there's Amanda. So she's back there working and cleaning some nets, throwing some stuff away. And so what we use in the tank. So this is what I'm debating on. I might use this. Uh, this is dwarf sage. I might use that for the background. Um, these are the other things. The the regular valcinaria, and then we got uh, spiralis down here. Or not spiralis. I keep saying crypt spiralis. A corkscrew valve, although it doesn't look very corkscrewy right now, but maybe it's just not the proper setup for it. We just kind of have it sitting in there, and so we might use that. They're all they're all really easy to keep plants. Um, I mean, all these crib winties, they're so so simple, and so here's a whole tank of them down here. Uh, this is crib sprouts. This is what we put in the center of all the islands. And um, just in case you guys are wondering, not a sales pitch. We do sell all this on our website, so if you guys are interested, these are. These are all for sale. And so uh, Crip Sprouts is another thing we use, another type of uh, Crip Wenty. And then, let's see, uh, Java Firm, we use a ton of this. We actually use the mats, which this is what a mat would look like. This is what a mat would look like. Uh, we didn't use any Anubias, unfortunately. I do love Anubias. 
Microsword is a plant that I really, really enjoy. Um, I haven't been able to keep it in a personal aquarium yet. I really, really want to. It's just, it, I mean, look at it. It looks like grass. And if you look at it with the, with the, I don't know, the platies in there, <laughs> it looks pretty cool, in my opinion. And uh, this is another one we really didn't get to use, which is the, the crib part of it. It's just a really low growing. Um, another option for the behind the scenes, let me know what you guys want me to use in the back of the tank. I might just take your suggestion. I can't promise it. Um, but if you guys leave some comments down below, please let me know um, whether you'd want Amazon swords, which grow really, really tall. They'll have tons of babies. They're really, really cool looking. Um, I guess we could even use water sprite. I really don't want to use water sprites. Scratch that. But water sprite is a, is a really cool plant. It's really easy to grow. Um, all right, so we got Amazon swords. We got dwarf sag. We got regular valcinaria, which I think is, no, it's not jungle valve. This is too skinny. We'll just say valcinaria. And then uh, corkscrew valve. So you guys let me know which one you'd prefer me to use and, uh, and just maybe I will take the suggestion that you take or that you guys leave. I mean, if, if a million people say you want to see corkscrew valve in the back of there, I'll probably listen to you um, because I really want, I, I'm leaning towards these two. But I mean, you guys let me know what you want to see and we'll make it happen. But yeah, that's a little tour so I of our plant. <laughs> I figured I'd come out here and shoot a uh, quick video in front of the mountain. And uh, we just got in a ton of matten filters, a ton of different foam. I mean, it's all over the place. There's every size that you could think of. I think we sell up to a 55 gallon and everything in the middle from 10 gallon to 55 gallon. But just absolute ton of it. But hey, you guys make it, well, I hope you're making it a great weekend. It's Friday now, I'll probably post this video on Saturday. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend at this point. Uh, if you're not, I hope it gets better. And uh, you guys just make it a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy your rest of your Saturday, your Sunday, or whatever it is. And uh, you guys just have a good one. So thank you all for supporting us, for watching. I appreciate it. And above all else, God bless.